Welcome to Samutsari, Conversations with Mimi, a weekly podcast by Dinosocial, also a member of the Guerrilla Podcast Syndicate. Samutsari is where we can show that ordinary people do extraordinary things. Tune in to be entertained and to learn something new with your host, Mimi Lorilla. Welcome to another episode of Samutsari Conversations with Mimi. Kwentuhang sidekick with Noel. How are you, Noel? And welcome to episode I'm great. number two. Thank you very much. And it's great here in Auckland. Uh, weather is great. Almost like Manila. Makes really? Miss Manila, Manila in the high 20s. And uh, unbelievable because it's nearly the end of summer here. And people are beginning to wish it would last longer. How yeah. was the weather day in Melbourne? Well, ito na nga, ang kagandahan ng ating podcast, meron tayong uh, co-host na nasa Auckland, New Zealand. Meron naman ang um, naka-base dito sa Melbourne, Australia. We're slowly dipping into the mid-twenties now uh, wow. dahil going towards winter na as you know. So, we're probably not as warm as you are in most days because everybody knows there's always, like Wellington, four seasons in a day dito sa Melbourne. <laughs> we can start warm in the morning, very cold in the evening. Sa midday naman eh, parang bumabagyo naman dito, may nag-e-hail pa minsan-binsan. So, we always uh, come prepared every day. So, we might wear summer clothes but we have a thick jacket in the car or an umbrella in the bag because you don't know what will hit you, um, you for the day. Four seasons in a day din dyan. Four seasons in a day. At meron pa kami fall sa, winter, sa fall summer, at kung ano-ano pang mga ah, gradients okay. ng weather. So yeah. I did I didn't realize I didn't realize na pa pickle din pala diyan ng yes, panahon na Yeah, yeah, but for me, in one but day. for me, I thrive in this kind of weather compared to Wellington because it's colder and wetter and I don't know more um you know conducive for me because <laughs> nagkaroon na ako ng onset of adult asthma before and that was one of the reasons why I said I can't as much as I love Wellington, I can't stay there anymore. I have to be in a warmer climate, okay. like 80% of the time. Where people still miss you in Jarvis, by the way. Naks because, naman ako. We're just yeah, a little yung, tiny bootil. Nobody uh, will pay attention to us. At yung band mo. Your long, no, dorm, your long dormant band. Yes. Ha? I think marami na silang... Um, pinagdaanan at marami na silang gigs <laughs> after we've gone. So next, I think that ship has sailed. Nila. Yeah, that ship has sailed. I don't think so. You're very <laughs> musically talented, Mimi, and I don't so, think at, at, you'll ever Yeah, meet. here I'm doing something else, Noel. I'm more of a mentor, teacher. Uh, I wow. teach piano and voice to little yeah. kids in the community. So, kahit napapapano yung pagiging musical ko ay uh, napapakinabangan ko pa rin. Napapakinabangan pa rin. Yeah, I, so I don't really miss it that much. But, going back to our topic for today. So, last episode, you mentioned that Something magical happened last Christmas yes, to yes, uh, the it, people it, it of was, Auckland, especially the Filipino people. Kwento mo naman sa amin, ano ba itong event na ito at talagang karapat-dapat natin siyang uh, i-share sa ating mga subscribers? Kasi, kasi, if I can start this way, uh, five days before Christmas, uh, I, I think it was the 20th, around 800 employees of uh, a certain construction firm were told in the middle of the day that they no longer needed to work. They no longer needed to work and they would not be receiving their pay pay packets that week and all their existing benefits would be put on hold and in fact were never given to them. Now of these 800 employees a very large a very large portion i think around 750 were filipinos mm-hmm. were filipinos and of the of this of the 750 around 500 were work visa holders in other words temporary visa temporary visa temporary lang ang stay nila sa sa new zealand in fact yung stay yung the entire stay in new zealand depends on their visa depends on their work now, so, kung no wala yung work na yun, wala, wala, silang, no wala na silang reason to stay in New Zealand. But how do you do that to someone 
uh, less than a week before Christmas when their entire future has been mortgaged. Well, I don't use mortgage naman in the literal sense, but you know what I mean. Their yeah. entire fortune, uh, future depends on that particular job in the in the in New Zealand. So, ang nangyari doon, um, as, as you very well know, paycheck to paycheck dahil lahat ng sweldo nila they send it home and <clears throat> uh, whatever is whatever little is help uh, is left, they use it they use it for their basics. They, they all pull together with, with, with all the other Filipinos. Ngayon, uh, it was a very sad situation because, because these people, the, the company, uh, you know, ELE Construction Group, you know, it was put under receivership. And, uh, and, and I don't know if it, if, if it was intentional there because of the holidays, unreachable ang mga kinauukulan, yung mga taong those who hold the purse strings, <clears throat> yung mga those people na, da, na inaasahan na mabigyan man lang ng kahit yung huling sweldo nila or nowhere to be found. So, ngayon, but looking on, alam mo naman, if, if, there, if there's a tragedy in every situation, meron, if you turn it inside out, there is an opportunity to do good. And that was what I, w- I wanted to talk to you about. Na, uh, spontaneously, out of nowhere, uh, of course, may mga, may mga main characters din na, na gusto na lang may mangyari, the, the doers, no? They decided to do something about it. And these, these families, uh, through the use of uh, food assistance, uh, cash, mga... I would want to use the word handouts, pero may binigyan sila ng cash gifts. Uh, they made they made it possible so that the families and these people themselves, kahit papano, had a bearable, a decent Christmas. Uh, they they were asked to they were asked to assemble weekends. Kasi wala na talaga. They had nothing. They had literally only the clothes on their backs they they had no money to pay rent they had no money they had no money for their next meals so their the next few meals so ang ginawa ng ginawa ng mga uh, kind hearts dito sa sa Auckland <clears throat> they decided to do something about it first they raised funds and then next they bought with these funds the basic things alam niyo naman bigas mm. pinaka importante bigas uh, kahit instant noodles anything Mm-hmm. And and they bought it in bulk, and they decided to distribute it to this to this, to this family. And th- there was no government. No, I'm talking about New Zealand government. No, there was nothing. No uh, government intervention. All, no government intervention. Although, although I would like to mention, na may ginawa naman ang Philippine Embassy. Ah, they they okay, they, they pin, may binigay silang pantawid dito sa mga. Uh, uh, dito sa mga ating mga kabayan na nasa lanta. Literally, nasa lanta sila. Uh, Filipinos in immigrante led by uh, uh, led by Mikey Santos and uh, si uh, I forget his name now pero he's a, he's a labor li- he's a labor leader. Kumuha sila ng paraan para kahit uh, in the interim magkaroon ng magkaroon ng jobs. Any, mm-hmm. any kind of job is true. Dennis Maga, now I remember him. His name is Dennis Maga and First Union Representative uh, Mikey Santos gumawa ng paraan para may pantawid sila. Kahit, kasi nga, you very well, uh, we know very well, you and I, Mimi, na even though it's Christmas, the week Chris, it, it, we have holidays, the week after that is the week of New Year mm-hmm. where most people, most people, are, you can't find them at work because they're all on holiday then. Yeah. And extended. So there's no way for them to find jobs. Mm-hmm. So they, 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 para kahit papano, may, may, meron silang, meron silang pantawid. Pantawid at, du- during that time. Noel, I will ask yeah. you more questions, but we'll take a break. And then when we get back, okay. I'll continue the discussion with you. Okay? Thank you. So. Okay, Noel, thank you for your brief summary. Ah. Pero naiintriga ako. I have some questions about that. Um, so, doon sa mga hindi nakakakilala sa ELE, sila ba ang pinakamalaking uh, parang 
manpower pooling agency ba sila or are they purely an employer na talagang mga migrant workers ang kanilang uh, most of the people that are, are employed under them? As far as I know, Mimi, nakatanggap sila ng mga contracts to build some uh, public, uh, some government buildings in Auckland. Hindi naman, I don't think they're, they're a large company, pero the group, out of the group uh, of five companies, four have already been placed under receivership. So, isa na lang natitira and mm. it, it did not end well for them. Okay. So, obviously, I think they tried to expand too soon. Pero the the uniqueness of the situation is marami silang nakuhang migrant uh, labor. And, yeah. Pero ang pinagtataka uh, yeah. ko lang, Noel, bakit wala man lang silang preparation for that uh, eventual cut off the ties? Yeah. Diba usually, pag ang ano kumpanya, eh, 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 you farm your ano people eh, out. Eh, may medyo kasi there there is a sense of not telling their employees and uh, rank and file everything kasi as as far as i know recruit sila na recruit eh kasi dun sa dun sa 750 na yon na nawalan ng trabaho uh, uh, as a uh, considerable number were actually resident visa holders mga ano mga as much as one third who were or actually recruiting people to come here. Uh, yun, ang, yun ang pagkaintindi ko. Kaya, nawala din sila ng trabaho. Di, di yeah. sila sin- and, ano lang, very lucky lang na residents na sila. So, although, yeah. although they, they will have a hard time looking for jobs, at least they're, they're here, and yeah. they don't have to think too much about yeah. their stay, mm-hmm. unlike the others, the, mm-hmm. other, the remaining 500 plus people. For na, sure. Ang inikisip ko rin, Isn't this uh, a recipe for a uh, mass legal action? For example, nagkaroon ba ng signature campaign itong mga naapektuhan at uh, inihain ba nila sa isang korte ang kaso nila? Everything kasi is very opaque. Eh. Napaka-opaque ng situation na hindi nila alam who, who to go to dahil sinabi na lang, ang nagsalita na lang yung receiver, Deloitte, Deloitte Corporation. Sinabi na lang nila na oh, uh, everything is under receivership. Uh, we cannot we cannot comment on the situation. Basta mm. uh, the, the, usual, ano yun, the usual admin administration of the assets and we have to preserve everything para dun mm. sa mga... There's a queue. There's a queue of people who are already not being paid. And of course, as you know naman, ang last, ang... Those holding the bag, the, the empty bag are usually the ones who have the least power mm. and uh, the least the pinakakonting means. So mm-hmm. in answer to your question, I have not heard of a mass of a class or mass action, but I do know that a lot, some of these workers have already found jobs elsewhere. Uh, kung baga, kanya-kanya ng whatever discount nila sa buhay nila. Kasi dito, Correct. sa totoo uh, lang, masyado silang your rights, your rights. So, if you know you have the right, kung taga dito ka, Correct. most likely, it will, the next step is legal action na yan. Masya, parang ang bait nyo, ang, ang babait nung, um, how, how many are they? 700 people, more or less. Uh, Seven, uh, uh, the, the, the number is closer mm, kasi nga number one iba, ibang position alam mo naman napaka vulnerable ng position ng temporary visa holders the work visa holders eh, dahil everything every, lahat hawak talaga ng employer hawak niya yung hawak niya yung uh, the job the job offer hawak niya yung yung income di ba siyang nami, siyang siyang nami although, although terms the terms of employment are supposed to be mutually agreed upon syempre take it or leave it situation yan lagi yeah. sa sa worker very vulnerable tapos isa pa in a naturally weak situation ng work visa holder dahil bago ako sa New Zealand eh i don't know many people all mm-hmm. i know is the guy who hired me di ba he is really in a very right situation to be exploited. Yeah. Correct. Ano yeah. At the tender mercies, as a tender mercies yan ng employer, who, mm-hmm. eh, siguro naman mga eight times out of ten, matino naman yan. 
Mm-hmm. Kaya lang, not so much in recent times. Yeah. Na wow. So, ibig sabihin, yung mga problema ang kinakaharap ng ating mga kababayan is still the same. I think that's part of the yes. job discrimination. Um, yung yep. sinasabi yep. mo na vulnerability, you're under the mercy of your employer, hindi ka maka, right. makakilos, kumbaga, you're, you're so weak to do this on your own, and yet, you can't really push your own personal agenda. Yeah, you can you, you can assert your rights kasi nga Correct. you're 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 in a very you're in a new situation. You you you've never been there before. You don't know anyone. You don't mm-hmm. know how it works. And as a side note, I'd like to say na uh recently hindi na lang Pinoy yung na-exploit mga mga Chinese mga Chinese employees. You can actually there are actually uh instances Chinese uh, nationals in the airport na dinala lang sila dito tapos di na alam pinabayaan na lang sila the, the, na scam talaga sila wow. it's, it's actually worse with, so, with parang with yung matrafficking na yan eh oh, in a way, no, no. In a way. Uh, ang gagawin sa kanila i-entay sila ng job diba? tapos bibigyan sila ng ticket ayusin yung visa na, oh ano ka muna visit visa ka muna and then when you get able to fix it diba? mm-hmm. and it's actually worse with the Chinese uh, counterparts of our kabayan because they really don't speak any English ah, okay. um, uh, at least tayo we, 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 Chi- we English try. is taught in our schools so kahit pa paano mm-hmm. kung hi- hi- hirap tayo sa Kiwi or Aussie English at least we can read English mm-hmm. diba? Eh, we can you understand can imagine, what's going on. You can imagine naman how it is for... Yeah, side note ko lang yun. Uh, mm-hmm. I just wanted to tell you that it's it's also happening to in other... In, right, um, okay. So, tanong ko naman. So, sabi mo kanina, nabanggit mo, or from the previous episode, that at least yung embassy natin ay tumulong naman sa fundraising, sa pagbigay sa kanila ng immediate needs nila. Pero, yes, do yes. they have e- any plans of something more long term or pwede ba sila ang mag pursue ng legal route na yan or have they coordinated with the department of migrant workers to uh, figure out a better way plan whether it's exit plan repatriation or something mm-hmm. else like danyos sa na sinapit ng ating mga kababayan you uh, when you think about it may meron talagang uh provision yung OWA di ba? the overseas Wel- Wel- welfare office and administration for things like for situations like this eh. and thankfully naman i'm not i'm not being uh, defending them may philippine overseas uh legal office uh labor labor office dito follow so to speak na in in alam na nila yung yung uh the rights and uh, uh, tools available to them so that they can either either uh, find new jobs diba? or at least use their existing visas kaya lang when you think about it they, they shouldn't di na sila dapat mangapay dahil alam na nila dapat yung ginagawa nila mm-hmm. so yun I know what I know is uh, yung the, the, the embassy here and as well, the polo it's called the Philippine Overseas Labor Office are doing things to at least assert or protect the rights of these this uh kabayan of ours may ginagawa mm-hmm. naman sila that's yeah. that's what i can say i think dapat siguro one time invitahan natin si Tita Lani Larsen to to talk about yes yes i would like to mention uh, b- before i forget nga uh, for uh, for our program samut sari nga and and I, I i think you're you have a growing uh listenership here I would like to mention Ms. Lani Larson as a source of the data, um, the little data that I'm able to share, as well as Mr. Dennis Panes Magalas, uh, isa sa mga movers and isa sa mga community organizers on his own. He doesn't, he, he works alone, this guy. His name is really? Dennis Magalas. He's yes. an interesting and person already. Tr- Naintriga ako sa kanya. We probably can bring him here also and, yeah, yeah. and chat with him. He works him. alone. He, he only works on during his free time uh, he, he use he goes around in a van helping newcomers yung mga naglilipat siya lang talaga on his own na nag, nag-expand na yung role niya dahil nga sa mga dahil sa nangyari 
Yeah, he he decided on his own to do. He does he doesn't ask for any help from anyone. He's a one man show. Dennis wow. Magalas. That's wow. his name. So yeah. Noel, in a assignment mo, ah, let's bring him to our, our oh, sige. program. Invite invite let's siya, talk, oh, let's talk to niya, him uh, and share his experience to us. And, and lastly, oh, lastly, uh, I'd like to add nga ang conduit ng assistance dito nga sa mga 750 kabayan natin was Lani Larsen's group, the Good Heart and ZPH Foundation. Pero ang nag-fundraise, Pinoy in NZ group. Sila naman. Pinoy in NZ. Oh, I'm a member yes. of Pinoy in yes. NZ. 1990 yes. plus. <laughs> yes. Yes. The group. Led by Miss Melds Opanes, Kircher, and Christine Carson. Y- yung grupo nila, sila ang nag-fundraise. Pero ang dinaanan ng assistance, uh, good heart. Wow. So sila no? and, their, and uh, the third uh, the third group naman yung sa umbrella ng mga tumulong yung mga church groups. Ah, mga I see. church groups led by yung uh, St. Benedict's Church parish group sa Auckland and St. Matthew's in Hamilton. Wow. And, 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 and Hamilton uh, people are also ano ah yeah. tight Oh, they're very yeah, close. Region oh, and and Uh, Miss Cora Sichon, yon yung mga nandon. Si so it it it's not been a one, it's not been confined to Auckland. May mga tumulong sa Auckland kasi nandun yung bulk ng mga tao. Pero may tumulong din sa sa uh, Hamilton and Wellington and in Christchurch because wow. nandun kung saan yung mga tao, kung saan yung mga kabayan natin na nagtatrabaho. Siyempre nandun din sila unang mobilized. Wala nang tulungan. Yeah, that's That's what I'd like to mention. And little, you know, people who chose to remain nameless. There was this couple. I don't know if I should mention their name. Kasi nga, there's no name. Kaya lang, sila may ari nung Auckland Brows Studio. Brows as in eyebrows? Yeah, you know, as in name. parang ano sila. Yeah, yeah. yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Beauty. Spa. Beauty and wellness. Yeah. Beauty and wellness spa. Ang ginawa nila, no? They bought 100 bags of rice. Uh, I don't know how much that cost, pero alam mo naman, isang 5 kilogram bag of rice. Nagano yun, di ba? They bought it and distributed it. Wow. So, parang they, COVID. They they parang COVID uh, ayuda. Anyone to ask them. Yeah, yeah. Oh, parang ayuda. Oh, oh. Pero ito, uh, this was a one, one, of, one of thing ginawa talaga nila for these for this people. And uh, yeah, I'd like to say na it, they sustained it They sustained it at least for the month of January. So, and sorry to say, nawala, nawala na ako ng, ng balita dahil na personal stuff din and my job. Pero I do know that na sustained every weekend between December, the end of December and January. Basta pumunta ng, ng, ng church Sunday na makikita mo na didistribute sila. You, you, you would wonder din, saan ang nagaling to? Saan ang nagaling? And, 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 and they would say, wala, nag-fundraise nag, nag lang kami kuya. We just pass the, we just pass the, you know, what do you call yeah. that? In the donation bag, alam mo yon. They just passed it around until, until they were able to come up with something to distribute. Wow. Kaya pala it's sabi not, ko, it's, it's, really, it's really newsworthy yung nangyari na yan. Not only because yung yeah. n- number of people that were impacted by this, but as, as a result of that very unfortunate incident, nag, nag ano naman, uh, rise up naman yung bayanihan spirit ng mga Correct. Filipino na, bayani. These people, these people should be proud of themselves. Na. And, and, you know, it, it, ang anda eh. May mga, may mga companies, no, I just like to mention a few, AJ Motors, Auto Pride, Pinoy One Stop in Pukiko. Okay. These are, these aren't, these aren't big companies. They're, they're retail, they're in retail. They, they're service shops, mga talier yan. Mm. Pero, ano sila, without asking for any, uh, they didn't ask for, for them to be mentioned. Pero, yung, kung ano yung product nila, ano nila they, they gave Same. they gave their time away or they gave their products away bamboo spa probably sure but, but pinoy business these are all pinoy businesses eh. mm-hmm. and 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 they decided on their own uh, um, alam mo wala naman tutulong sa atin kundi ang sarili natin correct correct ka dyan. <laughs> so let's start from our own backyard kumbaga 
Yeah, uh, exactly. Ano, makaahon tayo sa uh, sitwasyon na yan. Wow, what what a very very lovely story to start our ano no yeah. series of kwentuhans. Um and like I said, it's not probably always good news story ang mare-report natin, yeah. but we'd like to inspire people that that's why we want to invite uh, resource persons to share their experiences yeah. kasi part of the goal of Summit Sari is not just to to report but also to give a little bit of yung parang happy kick. Uh, in our own little way para masabi naman ng mga tao na okay, I'm feeling a little bit down today but because of that story uh, I'm lifted somehow na hindi pala ako nag-iisa Correct. or hindi pala the butterfly effect keep, mm-hmm. diba? Mm. so sabi nga ni Mikey Busto sa kanyang vlog where the positive uh, source of vibes online so I'd like to think that we're, we're doing the same thing Uh, we yeah. want to promote positivity uh, ad- Tama, amidst man. all these adversities, di ba? Ikaw nga, eh, like Every little bit helps. Yeah, like you said, you you had yeah. your yeah. own personal um, parang naging challenge uh, that you had to, you know, recuperate um, for a, quite a yeah. long yeah. time to be able to go back to the workforce and still you you have this passion to to um, you know do this on the side as an additional thing. Uh, I'd like to pay it forward. Yeah, you did it on your own. Hmm. Tama. Yeah. So I I think this so, is yeah. the right direction, and we now have some leads for some follow up stories based on on the experience last Christmas. So Noel, I really really wish to thank you for your time and your input. Mas masarap makipaguntahan. Uh, I should be the one to thank you. Yeah, kesa sa nag-isa ka lang na daldal niya ng daldal. <laughs> I'd, I'd like to, kahit pa paano, na-bridge natin yung uh, Melbourne at saka formerly Wellington. Kasi we'll always be Wellingtonians in heart. Oh, heart. yes. Sana I agree. bridge natin yung. Uh, I agree. Tsaka, as, as far as I can remember, uh, Melbourne is the Wellington of Australia. Di ba? The Correct. Yeah. And Sydney <laughs> is the Auckland. <laughs> <laughs> and Sydney is now magnified nga lang siya, geographically magnified. No. Pero that's the vibe na sinasabi nila. So Melbourne is to Wellington and Sydney is to Auckland. Well, uh, with that, Noel, thank you. I'll see you again in the next episode. And uh, you, we'll Mimi, be more prepared. Me. Yep, yep. That's true. Okay. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Hanggang sa susunod po muli. Bye. Bye. If you find value in this episode, make sure you like and subscribe to be notified of new releases. If you have any questions or suggestions, please reach out to Gorilla Podcast or send us an email at mimi at dinosocial.com. Spread the word and don't forget to tune in next time.